Hey, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today for our lesson, we're gonna continue talking about ways that we can graph data. And we're gonna take what we've learned in the previous lesson about using vertical tape diagrams, and we're gonna transfer that knowledge into making scaled bar graphs. So our learning goal for today says, I can create scaled bar graphs. Now, before we get started, we need to talk about the materials that you'll need. So first you're gonna need template one, which is graph A, and template two, which is graph um, B. So make sure that you look in the module and download those and print those. They're also in your math, um, your math book as well. So make sure you have those because you will be using those throughout this lesson today. Okay, so now that you have your materials, let's jump in and get started with the lesson. So first we're gonna start with our application problem. That's gonna lead right into the problem that we're gonna work with for our entire lesson today. So it says the vertical tape diagram show the number of fish in Sal's pet store. So this is just like what we did in the previous lesson. Here's our vertical tape diagrams. We have different tanks and each unit is five. So we're gonna find the total number of fish in tank C. So I'm only looking at tank C. What's the total number of fish in tank C, friends? Twenty-five. There's twenty-five fish in tank C. I know that because I have five units of five, which five times five equals twenty-five. So tank B has a total of thirty fish. Draw the tape diagram for tank B. So see, friends, I'm going to add in five, and then I'm going to go until I have thirty fish for tank B. So five, ten, fifteen. 20, 25, 30. Okay, so that represents my 30 fish in tank B. So I drew six units of five to show a total of, oh, that should say 35, or 30 fish in tank B. So how many more fish are in tank B than tanks A and D combined? So we're gonna kind of break this apart and do this into different chunks. So I wanna look at tank B first. Tank B has 30 fish. We just did that in the last part of the problem. So now I need to find out with tank A and tank D combined. So I'm gonna add those together. So if I look at tank A, friends, how many fish are in tank A? 15 fish. How many fish are in tank D? 10 fish, good. So now I'm gonna combine those together to find how many are in tank or tanks A and D. So if I have 15 plus 10 fish, what does that give me, friends? 25 fish. So now I need to find out how many more fish are in tank B than A and D. So I'm gonna create a subtraction sentence of 30 minus 25 and 30 minus 25 is five. So there were five more fish in tank A, or five more fish in tank B than tank A and D combined. So we're gonna draw the vertical tape diagrams from the application problem on our grid. So here's our grid. This is where you guys are gonna to need to take this part out as well. So make sure you have your grid that looks just like this one. This is template one. All right, so tank A has 15, so five, 10, 15. Tank B has 30, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then I want you guys to continue drawing the rest of yours um, vertical tape diagrams on your grid for C, D, and E. So click pause and go ahead and make sure that you complete all of those. And remember, you're just matching it to the data that's over here in these vertical tape diagrams. Now we're just taking this information and moving it over to our new grid that we have. So pause the video, do that for tanks A, B, C, D, and E, and click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, friends. So I'm gonna finish the rest of our bar graph, okay? So yours should look just like 
this. Now we're going to erase the unit labels inside the bar and shade in the entire bar. So what I mean by that is we're going to erase these fives and we're going to shade them in. So this five is going to go in, I'm going to shade it in. This five going away and I'm going to shade it in. And the same thing with this one. So you are just welcome to if you want, you can just color right over those fives instead of erasing whatever you prefer. So go ahead and do that for all of the rest of your bars. So here's what yours should look like now. It's the same thing. We just took off the labels of the unit five in each one. So what does each square on the grid represent? So this guy right here, what does that represent? Yeah, it represents five fish. We can create a scale on our bar graph to show what each square on the grid represents. So we're going to look at the horizontal axis, which goes from side to side, and I've just labeled in green. Now I'm going to label the vertical axis in red here, and we're going to label up the vertical axis on this one. So we're going to start at zero because that's where our number starts, so zero. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Why do you think I counted by fives as I went through there? Yeah, because each one of these squares is five. So if I fill in this square right here, I have five. If I fill in these two squares, I have 10. Then I have 15 if I keep going. Okay, so pause the video and go ahead and label up the side of your grid now, just like we, I did. Okay, if you need more time, click pause, but if not, here we go. So what do the numbers on the scale tell you? So the numbers that we have over here, what do those numbers tell us? Yeah, it tells us the number of fish, so you wanna label that side. So when anybody looks at this um, graph that we're making here, they're gonna know that those numbers represent the number of fish. What do the labels under each bar tell you? So all the way down here on the bottom, what does it tell us? Yeah, it tells us the tank, and that one's already labeled for us. What would be a good title for this graph? So what is this whole graph about? Yeah, it's about the number of fish at Sal's pet store. Something similar to that would be okay if you came up with a different idea. So make sure that you have these labeled on your graph. So pause to make sure you add the number of fish on the left-hand side and the number of fish at Sal's pet store across the top. All right, here we go. So how is the scaled bar graph similar to our vertical tape diagrams? How are they similar to each other? So I came up with, they both show the number of fish at Sal's pet store, and the bars have the same value. Both of the value is five, and we know that because it's labeled in our tape diagram, and we have that as our scale on the side in our bar graph. How are the scaled bar graph and the vertical tape diagrams different from each other? What do you guys think? So I came up with the scaled bar graph does not have labeled units, but has a scale. Okay, so that's our scale on the side. And then I also said that vertical tape diagrams label each bar. So they have the labeled unit or the unit labeled inside each one. So there are just some of the similarities and differences between a scaled bar graph and vertical tape diagrams. However, you have to think, they are pretty similar, right? Yeah, so it's just a different way of organizing the information. So let's create a second bar graph from the data. What do you notice about the labels on this graph? This is also template two if you want to take a closer look at it on your paper. What do we notice about the labels here? So we have the tanks, the number of fish, the title. What do you notice? Yeah, I notice that there's a title. 
it's labeling across the bottom and then it also lists the tanks. But this time, I see that the tanks are going vertically, I'm sorry, horizontally from side to side, where in the previous bar graph, they were going up and down vertically. So we're gonna count by fives to label your scale along the horizontal edge. Then we're gonna shade the correct number of squares for each tank. Now, you're taking the same exact information from your first bar graph, and we're transferring it to this one, okay? So tank A is still gonna have the same amount as the last bar graph, tank B is the same, and the same as our vertical tape diagrams, okay? We're just modeling this data in three different ways. Now, will your bars be horizontal or vertical when you're graphing for each, the fish in each tank? Yeah, they're gonna be horizontal as we go through now because our graph is turned sideways. All right, so you wanna label across the bottom. So notice here, zero, five, 10, 15, and you're still doing by fives because our unit is not changing where each one represents five. Okay, so now what I want you guys to do is finish labeling the scale across the bottom and click play when you're ready to share together. Okay, so this is what mine looks like. Does yours look the same, friends? Okay, awesome. Now we're going to actually put in our data from our last one. So tank A, we're going to label, has 10. Oh, sorry, 15. And then tank B has 30. Okay, so we're taking that same data from our previous bar graph and including it here. So for now, we're going horizontally side to side. So I started the first two for you. I want you to fill in the rest of your bar graph this way, please. Click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, so I'm going to fill in C, D, and E for us. So we're going to take graph A that we had, and we're going to turn it so the paper is horizontal. So now instead of being um, reading it up and down, we're going to turn it side to side like this. Compare it to graph B. So now I have graph A and graph B. What do you notice about the two graphs? Yeah, they show the same information, right? So we're, because we're taking graph A and we're turning it on its side, it's switching those bars to being horizontal now. Pretty cool, right, friends? Okay, so now we're gonna use graph B to create a number line to show the same information because there's lots of different ways that you can organize and display your data. So let's see how we can do it with a number line. So on your paper, you already have your number line drawn across on the bottom for you. It's on the bottom of your template. You're gonna to wanna to take a ruler or maybe a piece of paper so you have something that's like a straight line and you're going to draw straight down from your zero that you have here, straight down to draw a line. You're gonna to go to your five and you could take your ruler and you would end up drawing right about there. Go over to the 10 and so on until you have all of the points labeled. Okay, so go ahead and do that now. Click pause if you need more time. Okay, now we're gonna label all of those points and we're gonna take these same labels that we have up here because everything is scaled in units of five. So zero, five, 10. Go ahead and you finish doing that as well. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So notice it's matching the same up here that I have in my bar graph to the same information on my number line. Now what we're gonna do, what makes this a little bit different is we're gonna plot the actual points from our data in our bar graph. So the smallest number that I have is 10 and that is tank D. So I'm gonna label with a dot and write tank D above the 10. My next one is tank A at 15. So I'm gonna label tank A. 
Okay, so on your number line, I want you to label the rest of the tank. So you're going to label B, C, and E. So pause your video, go ahead and label those on your number line, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, here we go. So 20 is tank E, 25 is tank C, and 30 is tank B. So does yours match my number line? All right, awesome friends. Okay, so friends, let's kind of review real quick. So just in this picture, we're using our horizontal bar graph that runs from side to side, and we're showing that same information on our number line on the bottom. So today we've talked about vertical tape diagrams. We've talked about scaled bar graphs, which can be either vertical or horizontal. And we've talked about displaying that same information on a number line. So there's four different ways you can display that same information that we learned about with Sal's fish in his pet store. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so awesome job, friends, generating those scale bar graphs. Now, remember when it's a scaled bar graph, you're thinking it's just giving those intervals of what they are. So in units, those are in units of five. That's what makes it a scaled bar graph. Okay, so great job. You guys did an awesome job working on this lesson. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. <laughs>